Okay guys, we just uh, finished a video where we were able to select from a SQL database, a Microsoft SQL Server database, and select data from it and put it on the worksheet. Now we're going to continue and not only do a select statement, but we're going to do other uh, SQL statements. So where we're at is right here in the SQL database module. We are in the sub-procedure called SQL database. And what we did is... <coughs> You know, we declared this connection object to our database and we open this connection object. And let me just go over these parameters again. So for this CN SQL connection object here, this, C this provider tells the object, what, is it going to be a SQL database or an access database? So in this case, it's going to be a SQL database. This integrated security equals, equals to SSPI says you're not going to use username and password you're going to use windows integrated security this initial catalog is the database so i put that in comments initial catalog is equal to the database you want to query from and data source this pro this uh, parameter data source is equal to the server that the data source that the database is on so you have a server on that server there's a database and basically you can open a connection to that database here now, uh, we, did, we did in the previous video, we selected from that database. Now, I'm going to write a comment here. Uh, and we're going to do an insert statement. And what we'll do now is we are going to change our SQL string. Remember, we have a SQL string variable that's a string variable. And we put the SQL statement into that variable. Now we're just going to change that to SQL string is equal to something. And let's make it equal to this insert statement here, which is going to insert something into our, into our table. Uh, and that is, is the first thing we want to do is have our SQL statement stored in a variable so we do that here and now we want to execute the SQL statement to do that is really easy we have that connection object CN SQL and there's this dot execute here that allows you to execute this SQL SQL statement and you can see here, the it says execute, and then the first parameter is the command text. Well, our command text is going to be our SQL command here, the insert, the insert statement. So we'll do SQL string. And then records affected, that is an optional parameter. You can see it's optional because it has the brackets around it. And that t that's going to be able to, uh, to tell you how many records were affected by this SQL statement. So I'll put a variable in here called number of records affected. And I have to declare this. And then this here, it, this options as long one, this is where you put, you know, what kind of statement is this? And this is a a text statement it's a SQL text right so I'm gonna put a D C M D T E X T so that's what this parameter does uh, it tells the the connection object that what you're passing is is SQL text as opposed to a SQL store procedure with which we'll see in a little bit let me just go up to the top and declare this variable number of records affected and I'll do that here as uh, I'll put long and now I can write up a, a message box to show you um, I can I can do a message box to say well actually no we don't need to do that yeah, I guess we could. I could do this to say number of records affected is equal to number of 
records affected. So what I want to show you is that when you do an insert statement, it's going to insert these values, Joe and 35, into this table called people in these fields, name and age. And that's going to insert one row. So this number of records affected should be one. And we should see the number one in a message box. So now if I run this, uh, if I run this now, it says number of records is one and number of records affected is one. And that no the first message box we saw because of this here, I'm just going to comment this out. so that we don't see those message boxes. But let's go into our database and see what it looks like now. So if I select ID name age from people, look what happened. Now I have two I have two rows, one for Tom 45 and the next one for Joe and 35. So this row was inserted right here in our code. Right here at this line that's when Joe and 35 went into our database because we just inserted and ins you know executed that SQL string. So it's real easy to write it's to write insert statements uh, once you have these connection objects set up. All you need to do is pass in a SQL string, and if you want, you can put a variable in to say to tell you how many rows are affected. And then you tell the object, you know, is this a SQL text or, or whatnot. So it's very simple. Now let's do a update statement, which is going to be simple too. And again, we're just going to copy this. And what I can do is let me update Joe's age. So I'll update people. I'll set the age equal to 50 where the name is Joe. So now if I run this, it says one row affected. You see that? And if I select from the table again, now Joe's age is 50. Um, so this update statement works. And actually, let me set it to his age plus one. So that like whenever I run this, I go from 50 to 51 so we could see that it's working. So there's 51. If I run this update statement again, and then I select from the table again, there's 52. <clears throat> um, so let me just copy this update statement. Take it to my VBA uh, co VBA editor, and I'm just gonna I'm now I'm going to make the SQL string that update statement. Notice, you know, in SQL you need the apostrophes around text. You still need those in, in the VBA. And then you can do the same thing. Uh, SQL, SQL uh, connection SQL.execute. And it's the same thing. You pass in a SQL string you want to execute. You can get the number of records affected, and then you put AD command text. So now, <clears throat> let's run this now. And I don't think we need a, well, let's put a message box here. And if we run this, it says number of records affected two. And why is it two? Well, it's because we inserted Joe here. <clears throat> so if we go to our database, Um, let's look at our database. Now I have Joe that was inserted. It, Joe went from 52 to 53. And then the inserted Joe that went in is 35. So up here, we inserted Joe at 35. And then we updated everything with Joe to set the age equal to age plus one. So up here, I insert a insert a record with the name of Joe and his age 35, and then right below it, I said, I said if if anyone in the database is named Joe, make their age one year 
bigger. <clears throat> so he went from 35 to 36 real quickly. Um, so that's that's what's going on there. Let me uh, <clears throat> run this again. Number of records three. Um, <clears throat> and I should also change this select statement here so you could see the data on the worksheet. So <clears throat> let me eliminate this uh, where statement so that now if I run this, you can see all the data on the worksheet. So do you see what's happening here? <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> I just changed this select statement because I wasn't seeing all the data I was in the database. I had a where statement that was filtering on, su on stuff. Now we see all the data on the worksheet as well in the database. And you can see it's real easy to execute insert statements, update statements. Now we'll do a delete statement. And that again is really simple. Let me just do, I'll just change this. And I'm gonna delete everything from people where the ID is greater than six. So I wanna delete like anything. I have this ID field. I wanna delete anything with the ID greater than six. So I'm gonna delete four rows here, these four rows. So when I run this, all I have to do is, you know, go in here change my SQL string to delete from people where ID is six. Now I'll get a message box that says four rows are affected. Again, you know, it's the same dot execute statement. You pass in a SQL string to execute and you can get the number of rows affected by that SQL statement. And if we run this now, I'll get number of, of records affected is five and click OK. So look what happened. It said there's five rows affected. Um, that's because we inserted a row here and there were already four rows in the database. So that's why there were five rows affected. And if we go to the database and we select from it, you could see all the rows that had an ID of greater than six are now deleted. And that's because of what we just executed here. Um, <clears throat> and if we run this again, it says number is affected one. And you can see that now I'm only getting one row in my worksheet. So I'm going to comment. Uh, I'm going to comment this out. And I want to show you one more thing. You know, you see how easy this is. I'm just going to comment this out. Because I don't want to keep deleting stuff. <clears throat> or actually, I'll do, yeah, I'll just comment it out. Because I don't want to keep deleting everything. Um, but I want to show you, you know, you see how easy it is to do insert statements, update statements, delete statements. And up above, we did a select statement, right? So now you have all this at your disposal. One more thing that is going to be useful to you is that when you're writing these SQL statements in VBA like this, you want to, sometimes you're going to need to pass in variables for your, for your fields here or, or the, uh, you know, <clears throat> the criteria on your, on your queries. So you can do that really easy. So if I create a variable at the top, like name as string, age as integer, I can use variables now instead of having things hard coded in my query and my uh, SQL statements down here. So let's say I want to update you know, 
I want to do this update statement, but I don't want to have it hard coded at Joe. I want to have it. I want to have a variable here like name is Joe, and then I want to use this variable in the SQL string. So to do that is easy. You just got to replace Joe with the the variable name. But you want to remember to keep these apostrophes around it, and you want to remember to break up the the string properly. And that's pretty straightforward. You just delete whatever is hard coded, and you put a quotation mark, and then ampersand the name of your variable, ampersand another double quotation mark. Because basically you're concatenating a string here, and we've done this before with the ampersand. Now I'm just using the variable name in between the ampersands. So now I have a dynamic sort of <coughs> SQL statement where I have a variable being passed in and it's not the same name that's going to be updated. So um, if I, I could do the same thing here for this age. If I do age is equal to 44, I could pass in 44 here in this insert statement by doing something like this. Uh, a po uh, quotations, I'm breaking up the string, so I'm going to use my ampersand age and then another quotations. The main point is you want your 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 SQL string your your SQL statement to look you want it to be valid. So it's going to need to have the syntax, the proper syntax, you know, here's the proper syntax with the quotations uh, or with the apostrophes and the parentheses and then the values in between all that has to be correct in your VBA code when you do this dynamically and it's not too hard you just gotta you get you gotta remember to break up the seek the strings with the apostrophes and keep things like the uh, not the apostrophes with the double quotes um, and keep things like the apostrophes and the parentheses so here like I have a, a, a ampersand and then just the parentheses in double quotations because I need to have this format look like good SQL syntax, right? It has a parentheses here, and basically, I'm I'm having this value is now going to be a variable in my VBA code. So now, if I put ages 44, let me just put a uh, a breakpoint here, and I'll run this. So when I get to this line, let me look in my database, and there you see Joe was inserted with an age of 44. So dynamically, I put 44 in an age variable and then use that in this insert statement here, and it was inserted. Now I have this update statement that dynamically uses a, na a variable name, uh, a variable is called name, and I'm going to update it from an age of 44 to an age of age plus one here. And so let's run this code. I'm going to just click run. And now if I run this, you know, this should be go to 45 for Joe. And sure enough, you know, Joe is now 45. So that's what I wanted to show you in this video. It was how to, I wanted to show you how to execute these other SQL statements like insert, updating, and deleting. They're real easy. You just use that SQL string variable and then this uh, dot execute on a command on a connection object. And then I wanted to show you how to break up your SQL statements in VBA using ampersands, uh, double quotations, so that you can they don't have to be static. You can put you can use variables in your SQL statements in VBA. Okay. Uh, next video, we'll, we'll talk about a, using uh, executing a stored procedure in SQL Server and then getting the data into VBA. All right.